Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today DICE dropped a new Battlefield 2042 trailer with new looks at three maps, and they look absolutely massive. The maps shown in the trailer are Renewal, Breakaway, and Discarded. And my first takeaway before getting into the details of the new weapons and gear is that the scale of Battlefield 2042 is truly epic. Especially the Frozen Breakaway map that DICE previously touted as being absolutely massive in scale, well, they're right, it looks insane. The footage almost looks like it could be out of an Elder Scrolls game with some massive sprawling world. I was half expecting to see a dragon or an army of swordsmen running across the frozen glacier. But no, this is a battlefield game and it's literally bigger than anything we've had before. I can only imagine the insane sniper shots that are going to come out of this or some of the cool jet and helicopter maneuvers using the massive glaciers as cover. Now, I'm about to get into the details and break down all of this trailer info, but before we do, here's a quick word from today's sponsor. Do you use the internet for banking, sending private information, or logging into other secure websites? Of course you do. It's 2021. Everybody does. The real question is, why are you doing it without good security? Your ISP, websites, the government, and hackers are all interested in grabbing your info, and you're running a big risk when using the internet without a VPN security. Security measure. The good news is today's sponsor NordVPN can help you browse securely and protect your online accounts. They offer industry standard encryption via their virtual private network that hides your IP address, lets you route your traffic basically anywhere in the world, and works on pretty much every device that uses the internet. But on top of their VPN service, Nord also offers NordPass and NordLocker. NordPass is a secure password manager that can generate basically uncrackable passwords automatically. So if a hacker manages to steal some of your login information from a big tech company data breach, the chances of them brute forcing your login details are basically zero. Go to nordvpn.com slash levelcapgaming to get a two-year plan plus a bonus gift with a huge discount and it's risk-free with the Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Plus while you're checking it out, consider adding NordPass to your order to keep your online accounts as secure as possible. So stop browsing the internet waiting for somebody to take advantage of you. Go get NordVPN today. All right, let's get into this footage and talk about the new gameplay details. And it's worth mentioning that the first clip actually looks like it's from an older build since it still has the same kill log UI elements as the beta did. Subsequent clips in the new trailer showed the updated HUD that DICE previewed last week, so it's tough to say if these inconsistencies mean anything in particular. It's entirely possible that DICE is also just giving you the options to move these things around the screen, but I would wager that this was recorded on an older build of the game, so if the UI looks old, it's because it probably is. Now we also noticed that Irish's armor ability looks like it starts him off with 10 armor, but that's also hard to say considering the clip starts basically mid-firefight. His specialist ability is a deployable shield and his passive lets him give his friendly teammates armor. And when he runs over dead enemies, it gives him 5 armor points. The maximum amount of armor players can equip is up to 20. Now Sundance's wingsuit is probably a straight up replacement of the parachute since there's no obvious sign of it being on the cooldown in this trailer. They simply use it multiple times as they're wingsuiting down from a cliff. You can also see ice fall off of icebergs which might do debris damage, kind of like blowing up the side of a building in previous Battlefield games. Now there's still no sign of any RTX features like ray traced reflections. Nvidia and EA have announced both DLSS and reflex low latency options for 2040 but they've stayed silent about ray tracing. Battlefield 5 was one of the very first ray trace titles and they made a huge deal about it for the game's launch. In this gameplay footage, you can see some very obvious screen space reflection artifacts. Basically, if level geometry is off screen or obscured by a foreground object, it won't be rendered in the screen space reflections and we see that in multiple shots on the breakaway map. Now we also see the AK-24 holographic sight displaying remaining ammo in real time time. This is pretty cool and it could be great for hardcore portal modes and will probably be available on guns that support that specific optic. Now discarded features fully destructible buildings in the opening clip. None of the major structures in the beta build on the orbital map could be fully leveled. It's still unclear if the launch version of the game will feature more robust destruction. We see a massive explosion on the top deck of the beach 
damaged cargo ship, but it doesn't seem to blow the floor apart or anything really dynamic. We see the 12M auto shotgun and it has a three hit kill in CQC. Tough to say how that will fit in with the meta without seeing other shotguns, but it looks on par with other automatic weapons in terms of its TTK. Also, there might not be an entry animation for getting into the Little Bird. The trailer hard cuts from ground to air footage, but we know that DICE have shortened or straight up removed many of the animations for launch. The Nightbird, aka Little Bird, now has 20 millimeter cannons, which look like an optional upgrade that look way more devastating compared to the mounted miniguns from the beta. Granted, the miniguns might be more effective at certain types of combat compared to the 20 millimeter cannons. It also doesn't look like the enemy visual appearances have been updated to help distinguish enemies from friendlies. Again, this was probably recorded on an older build of the game. There's a mix of blue and red clothing on multiple characters, but most enemies just have a generic appearance that doesn't separate them from the other players. Dice said they're tweaking soldier appearances, lighting, and the heads up display to make it more obvious on who's friend and foe. Now, overall, this is an important trailer for Dice to release. We need it and frankly still need to see more gameplay, and every drop of extra footage shines some light on the mystery that is Battlefield 2042. There's still so little that we actually know about this game when you look at the promised wealth of content DICE are planning to deliver. We're honestly just skimming the surface with these trailers. And out of the seven standard mode maps that are coming out at launch, we now have a decent sense of the experience on at least five of the maps, with the hourglass map being heavily featured in the first gameplay trailer and Orbital being the main showcase of the beta. Now the final two standard maps that we know less about, Manifest and Kaleidoscope, we have seen snippets of gameplay with Manifest being featured a little on the Hazard Zone trailer and the Reveal trailer having Kaleidoscope popping up here and there, but we still have a lesser sense of what those maps might feel like with boots on the ground. Also, very little footage has been shown of the six classic maps that are being remastered to run with Portal. I wonder if DICE still has another trailer planned to show off the classic maps in Portal mode a bit more before the game launches. And to be honest, it's a bit funny because although the majority of the gameplay that's been showcased so far is mainly showcasing the Conquest game mode, my imagination immediately wanders to, I wonder what's possible on this map in Portal, or I bet this will play out interestingly in Hazard Zone. And I can't help but wonder if this is a sign that Conquest really is slipping when compared to the rest of Battlefield 2042's feature list. I mean, Portal on its own could be the Garry's mod of Battlefield, offering potentially infinite content when Conquest is, well, well, it's just Conquest. What are Battlefield players actually going to be playing in two months? Conquest on Manifest, or will it be Prop Hunt on No Shark Canals? I honestly have no idea, and I think that's kind of the basis of my excitement for Battlefield 2042 right now. We're literally weeks away from the early access launch, and I still have no idea what I'm going to gravitate towards once the game launches. Am I going to completely forgo the base game and just focus on Portal? Is Hazard Zone really going to jive with my playstyle? I don't know. I've never been more confused about an upcoming Battlefield launch before, but I'm also pretty darn excited at the same time. Let me know what you guys think about the new trailer in the comments below. Were there any cool little details you think I missed here? As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.